JJ Space, a DPSN video blog. Uh, so my name is JJ Eldridge, and uh, the second Doctor is my favourite Doctor. Tell us about binary stars. So this is the thing, when you look at the sun, you see it's only a single star, and most stars in our galaxy, and hopefully the universe, we think, have actually got at least one companion. And that really changes up their entire evolution. And my research really looks at exploding binary stars, and how, rather than our sun, which will one day become a red giant and die a very slow death, stars that are more massive than our sun can actually explode. And if there's another star nearby, they can interact and they can make really unusual explosions. And like they can get really energetic supernovae from binaries because they can spin each other up. And they can even collide together and merge, which is kind of exciting. Tell us about the gender binary. I study exploding binary stars while trying to explode the myth of a gender binary. Everyone assumes that there's only male and female, and we know that from science there's much more diversity than that. All the latest research in terms of a person's biological sex and their gender identity show that they don't have to be aligned and they're much more diverse. It's just this Western European idea that you've got to fit into these two boxes and you've got to be linked. What's the connection? When you look at the galaxy and you know there's about 200 billion stars in our galaxy, and you know, no one tells me that binary stars don't exist in the universe because our sun's single. You know, the sun is only one star, and like 75% of the stars in the galaxy have a companion. But then when there are 7 billion people on the planet, people tend to tell me that or tend to tell other people that, no, there must only be male and female, and your, your gender and your sex must be aligned, because it is for them, right? And this is the problem, is the science tells us it's not. If we look at the studies, and there's a lot of literature out there and studies that, you know, that you can be diverse gender, and you can have a diverse sex and be intersex, you don't have to be one or the other. And yet, for some reason, that science seems to not be trusted, you know? And it's like, for some reason, because the universe is so extreme and so distant and it's so beautiful, and so many people think astronomy is hard and don't want to understand it, you sort of accept the science that comes from astronomy. But when you're looking at this thing that's all very personal, because our gender does define us very carefully, and it's very tough not to have an opinion about gender. But it's just interesting that, you know, also when you look further afield at what ignoring this science means, you want the same sort of science that tells you about gender and sex, because it's all about genetics and understanding how bodies develop. How can we develop treatments for people that need to have genetic diseases overcome? And, like, understanding what that problem is. Other things such as like if you're worried about disease resistant bacteria and like having a, a heart transplant or like an artificial heart or any of these things, it's all the same science that comes together. The same science? Now understanding of biology has changed so dramatically over the past decades that it's amazing. I mean if you think about our understanding of the universe, 20, 30 years ago, we didn't even know that the universe was expanding a lot. And now we know that it's expanding at an ever-increasing rate. And this has all come about because of computers. Some of the astronomical techniques we've been able to develop with computers, we can now apply to actually understanding biology. Because rather than having to count the number of cells as they develop by eye, you can have a computer program do it for you. And there's this wonderful thing that as computer technology advances, as all science marched together, we can leapfrog off each other. You can think back that in the 1600s, Newton came up with his theory of gravity. Then in the early 1900s, Einstein came up with general relativity. It's not saying Newton was wrong, it's just our understanding of gravity can become better. And we know that Einstein must be wrong at some stage. And we will build a new theory on that sometime in the future. But the same has happened with biology. But it becomes very difficult when it's something that becomes personal to us to sometimes try and oversee that and try and trust the scientific evidence.